Well, hey, welcome back to Comic Book News. I've been out for a couple of weeks with uh, kidney stones, and uh, good thing not much has been happening, huh? Uh, let me take a look over here in the news and see. Holy crap. Okay, folks, welcome back to Comic Book News, and this is the kind of news uh, I've been fearing for a long time. You know, uh, uh, we all know the situation that's going on, not just in your town or in your state or in this country, but all over the world. And there's going to be all kinds of coverage about how uh, this crisis is going to affect all kinds of businesses and all kinds of people's lives. And well, this is comic book news, so we're gonna talk a little bit about how uh, this stuff is gonna affect comic books. And man, it's not looking super good. Uh, if you're looking at all, um, let me just uh, make a little room here. If you're looking in the news, even at all, um, about comics you're seeing all kinds of stuff's been happening first of all you know we saw some some shops some well-known shops starting uh to close like we saw lee's comics now i've known lee hester for many years uh he uh owned several stores in the bay area and growing up you know it was always a store you knew you could go to that was going to have a very wide selection uh, of new stuff and old stuff is always going to be meticulously maintained just a great shop, you know, like a, a well-managed shop. If a shop like that can't survive, um, I don't think many shops have a chance. Now, this closure, you couldn't really chalk it up explicitly to uh, the current situation because, um, you know, Lee's has been contracting for years. They had multi, he used to have a couple of stores. He shrank down to one. That store shrank from double its size to half, and then... Uh, since the economy took a downturn the last time, things have not been not been looking up. You know, in a place like Mountain View, where his last store remained, the rents have got to be sky high. And the amount of comics that you have to sell just to stay in business as long as he has, I, I give it up to the guy. I didn't always agree with him on everything. We had some differences, but um, he always ran a great store. And um, I'm sad to say the retail industry is uh, a, a little bit less without the guy. <clears throat> that in itself was not the scariest part, you know. Um, different stores were responding to uh, this closure in different ways, right? So um, Bleeding Cool did some good stories and talked to a few people, a bunch of people that actually that I know and, and I'm friends with and I'm hoping um, to maybe have on the show. One of whom who has been on this show, Brian Hibbs, we did an extensive interview with Mr. Hibbs. Uh, about his wonderful store comics experience in San Francisco. And, uh, you know, well, he talked to um, Bleeding Cool a couple days ago and said, we're closed to walk in trade as mandated by the government. My expectation is that we are the canary on this and such closures will go wider and wider over the next two weeks, possibly culminating in martial law. It's possible things can be shut down for months. Sales are radically off, duh. And even our aggressive attempts to set up curbside pickup Shipping or pay now will hold your books have yielded a tiny fraction of the income we'll need to remain viable without drastic intervention by the largest publishers. What we need is an immediate extension in everyone's sales terms by at least 30 days and probably more like 90, as well as shipments from 316 and later being fully returnable via affidavit. We need production of marginal material, 15,000 or fewer copies, to be paused or canceled, and so on. Every bleeding cool retailer should right now, before things get shut further down, set up a pre-order list with their local comic store. Okay, now I would go on and on here, but things have changed radically even in the couple days since this is published. Another friend of mine, uh, Ed Greenberg of Collector's Paradise, a chain of three stores that uses uh, some software that I wrote to run the, his comic book stores and in fact his online subscription store is one of the best in the industry thanks to some stuff uh, I, I helped him out with. He, Ed responded, you know, by uh, ramping up curbside pickup and making all kinds of plans for that um, to, to, to keep his customers engaged with their comics, you know. Everybody's thinking people are stuck at home. 
this is actually a time when people are going to really want their comics and would be appreciate being able to get it, get them. Um, unfortunately, um, uh, things changed dramatically today uh, as the news dropped that Diamond Comics uh, will stop receiving new comic shipments of comics. So they're they're gonna only going to ship out stuff that's already in the warehouse. They're just going to stop getting shipments of comics altogether. So in a move similar to one announced by Amazon last week, Diamond Comic Distributors is no longer taking in new comics at its warehouse. Comicbook.com can confirm Diamond has asked printers to not send them any new more new products. The hold, the result of a slowdown in the economy due to the current pandemic, will remain in place until further notice. Diamond will continue to ship out products that are already in its warehouse for the time being. This is a significant signal towards the future for comic shops around the country. Diamond is the exclusive distributor of new releases from all of the comic direct market's biggest publishers, including DC Comics, Marvel Comics, Dark Horse Image, Dynamite, Boom, IDW etc., as well as many of the other smaller publishers. Diamond controls such a significant portion of the direct market that the system cannot function as is without the distributor. We're still awaiting more specifics, but Diamond typically doesn't keep a large backstock of new comics in its warehouses. That's to say, it shouldn't be long before its stock of new issues is depleted and the flow of new products to comic shops come to an end. What comes next is an open question. Will publishers continue to put out products if the direct market grinds to a halt? Could the market pivot towards focusing more on the digital side of things during this? Comixology is in place and other systems could pop up, but will readers make the jump? Or will the industry's biggest publishers simply go on pause for the duration of the crisis? These questions remain unanswered, but more news is sure to be forthcoming. This news comes after publishers have been rolling out plans to help ease the stress this will put on the direct market. Some, like Image Comics, announced it would make new comics returnable. Marvel announced a discount to books being sold to retailers. This also follows news that the annual industry free comic book day has been delayed from its usual place at the beginning of the year until later in the year. It is also worth noting that Diamond owns Alliance Game Distributors, a significant presence in the games market, but not to the extent of what Diamond means to comics. No word yet on Alliance's plans. So, right, that's an understatement. Like, Diamond is the comics industry, right? I mean, you, you could have a comic book store and not get stuff from Diamond, and actually still have a reasonable amount of stuff, get stuff through the book trade and whatnot. You could go graphic novels and probably have something resembling a comic book store, but you certainly wouldn't have the the weekly comics. You wouldn't have Wednesday. You wouldn't have the core thing that so many businesses are built around. Man, comic shops are... Um, uh, 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 really important, right? Really important to me. And... I'm really worried about what this means for, for not just like the far future of comics, but now like the industry is in jeopardy right now. We are at an inflection point. Are people going to pivot towards digital? Are they going to make the move towards bookstores? It's, it's pretty clear to me DC Comics has been making moves towards moving toward, uh, away from the direct market or certainly diversifying more into the book trade than ever before. Uh uh, Marvel's done a little bit of that with licensing some of their kids' books to other publishers. All of them are sort of like shedding the less profitable aspects of the comic book industry, and um, the direct market just might be a remnant of all that. You know, it's sad to say, but one of the things we're going to be doing here on this channel is we're doing our very first live stream. Um, I call it Airwave, and it's going to be coming up on Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Pacific. And I'm inviting as many retailers as I can get from all around the country to talk about the impact uh, that this crisis is having on their stores. Uh, what are their plans? What is the f future going to bring for uh, comics in general and their stores in, in, in particular? And, uh, you know, I hope that you will all be able to join me. I hope that you all uh, also click like and subscribe and, and, and add a comment to this video. This is not my uh, usual style of video. Um, it's uh, kind of serious. There's no million dollar comics cam. I'm, I'm not really even going to talk about any comics today because this is just, this is a topic that is super near and super dear to my heart. I grew up working in a comic book store. I had my first job at a comic book store starting at the age of 11 years old. I worked for $2 an hour in store credit. 
back when comics cost 65 cents a piece. And I worked there all the way through high school. I came back after college and I bought that store and I ran it for almost 10 years and, and, and sold it about over 10 years ago now. I saw the writing on the wall back then for the industry. I didn't see it as something long term that was for me, but I definitely uh, saw it as having, um, you know, for the right person <clears throat> with the right uh, set of skills, you could still make a comic book store work, and 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 that could be something that 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 could happen in the right town, in the right geography, etc. It wasn't working out for me in San Jose, California, um, but secretly in my heart. I still want to open a comic book store, and I would love to have one again, uh, maybe in my little town. But that's uh, ep seemed economically unrealistic before, and might be literally downright impossible now. So anyway, please join us on the Air Wave live stream. We're going to talk to retailers. It's going to be our first of many. Um, I was recently on the Thinking Critical live stream. And I had a lot of fun. Uh, uh, Wes on the show, I'll try to put a link here to that. Um, and I hope to be on that again. I hope to have more live stream events and bring people in on a more regular basis talking about comics and comic shops and what's going on and, 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 and how are we going to keep this comics thing alive. So thanks for watching. Keep your family close and keep them safe. That's obviously the most important thing. I, I, there are so many things that are more important about comic books, but this is my little corner of uh, the universe, so this is what we're going to talk about um, just to keep my sanity and to talk to other people and to reach out there in this time of isolation. We need to use the digital tools we've got to reach out and not further isolate ourselves. Anyway, great to talk to you. Thank you for watching, and we will see you soon.